Welcome back, everybody. I have your stimulus update for today and hot off the presses new statements by Secretary of Treasury Steven Mnuchin on the state of negotiations and the fact that he just wants to get together right now with the Democrats and pass what they can. And in his own words, then continue to work on a sixth bill going into January or February. I'm going to tell you exactly what he said and what I think about it and whether or not I think they can really get this thing done. Welcome back, everybody. This is your stimulus update for Wednesday, August 12th. Now, I know we're all a little disheartened right now. We've been hearing, can they get this done? Can they not? And it just seems like they're falling apart all over the place. And a lot of people are almost done with it. Like, I just happen or not happen. I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. And I get you on that. But the fact of the matter is, is it's not done yet. And they do still need to come together and negotiate these things out. So Steven Mnuchin came out today and he said a few things. Some things I like, some things I don't. I'm going to share with you them. I'm going to try and stay positive and then by the end of the episode tell you when I think they can get together and as time goes on this is going to hurt one side more than the other and that actually might help bring about some sort of compromise so that American people can just get a little bit more money you can get money to businesses state and local governments hospital schools and all the rest so what did Steven Mnuchin say he was asked about his view on negotiations and this is what he says I don't entirely agree with him what do you think he said my view on negotiations is you agree on the things that you can agree on half legislation that's good for the American people and then come back for another bill. So if negotiations is agreeing on the things that you can always agree on and then doing that and then you come back, I would have pressed him if I was interviewing and I might have said, Stephen Mnuchin, with a mentality like that, that always means that the side that wants the least amount is generally going to get more of what they want. And the side that wants more is never really going to get entirely what they want, only what the side that wants least agrees on. That's not a very healthy view on negotiations, in my opinion. Negotiations should be much more about a compromise. And so if I was working with Steven Mnuchin, he needs to change up his mentality a little bit on what negotiations are to talk him off of the cliff of not offering enough money in compromising. I didn't quite like what he said in negotiations. What are your thoughts? Am I off on that one there? He also said, let's spend a little more than $1 trillion on the areas of the economy that are going to be very impactful now that we can agree on if if we need to do more, we will come back and do more and work together. So basically, Steven Mnuchin is saying we should get together just right now, pass what we can, give states and local governments some more money, get the unemployment boost going, get the checks out to people, and then we will work on a sixth bill. And he actually did say a sixth bill later on in the interview. I'll give you that quote in just a second. Do you agree with Steven Mnuchin? Should they do this? Or do you say, you know what, if they did this, then the Democrats would literally lose all of their leverage because I will call him out on that. Although I do agree, like, can we just finally get something done with the American people? I think Democrats and Republicans on both sides are basically coming together. Like, for, for the love of all goodness, can we just get something done at this point and fine, work on another bill after this? But you do have to agree that if they just did pass this bill as it stands, that Democrats would essentially lose all of their negotiating power because what reason are the Republicans really going to have to come back and do anything that they want to do? I mean, they're not willing to do it right now. So why would they do it later? But as time goes on, public opinion is going to favor that stance. Initially, the person who promises the most, and you'll see this in presidential candidates and different parties, they'll promise a ton of stuff. I'll do this and this thing and this free. And usually public favor and public opinion is on their side. But as time goes on and they can't really give you those things, what ends up happening is public opinion shifts towards the side that says, we will actually just give you something. You know what I mean? We'll, listen, it's not everything you want. It's not terrible. It's, it's actually fairly good. But we're willing to do this now. So as time goes on, Public opinion is going to begin to shift, which is going to be pushed by the Republicans that we are willing to just pass this right now. Like they're going to literally say, please, let's just pass what we can right now. And then after the election, you can work on another bill. There's going to be a new president, maybe, or Donald Trump. There's going to be a different type of Senate, maybe, or the same one. Work on it after that. But let's just get to the American people what we can now. 
Do you see how that sort of a statement is going to begin to shift the public opinion towards the side of the Republicans, whether or not people agree with what they're doing or not? This mentality is going to become impactful for the Democrats because they're going to see it as an issue for them coming into the election, which actually may cause them to want to compromise on this bill. And if Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are smart, they will compromise a lot more and then reveal that to the public and say, this is what we're going to do. You know that $1 trillion number? We came down to $500 billion. You know this number? We came down here so that the public can see, oh my goodness, like they're really making moves here. Then that's going to shift the burden back on the Republicans and they're going to have to meet the Democrats. That's what they should do. That would be a smart public negotiating strategy. I'm not saying, if I was advising them, that's what I would advise them to do. It's not the best for us because we just want something to get passed. But what are your thoughts on that? By the way, the presidential debates are coming up soon in September. I told you guys I'm going to be covering that very closely. You are going to want to stick along with this. This channel is going to shift. I know you guys like the stimulus news, and I can see as I touch on different things a little bit that the views fall. But unfortunately, stimulus news is going to go away at some point. I am going to be covering very heavily the important news items of the day, the political news items, President Donald Trump, Joe Biden, the interactions between them, the election, and going forward national and world news. If you want to be a part of that, I'm going to offer you interesting perspectives, much more than I've been able to offer you on the stimulus. I've been a little handcuffed on this one. I've been trying to stay very nonpartisan. You will begin to see some of my partisan views come out just a little bit and my bias come out a little bit more because I do actually agree with one side more than the other, and you might be able to pick it up. But as time goes on, if you enjoy that, stick with the channel. If you don't, you may end up finding yourself uh, uh, moving away. But I would advise you not to because even if you don't agree with me, it's always good to have somebody that you look at and you go, I don't agree with the guy says, but at least he gives me his perspective and I can strengthen my own perspective based off of what he says. All good, smart people do that. They want to know what the other side is thinking from a really good strategic argument so that they can build up their side against that argument. And if you only listen to the people you agree with, you will never be able to do that. So anyway, Steven Mnuchin continued forward. He talked about the unemployment boost and he said that we thought a fair compromise on the boost was $400. That's what we talked about. So in negotiations, we know that they now in fact compromised to $400. And that's why President Donald Trump issued that $400 executive order, which is not going to be entirely what everyone wants it to be. He also said we ended up putting up another $150 billion on the table for state and local governments. I said around $250 billion. That's where I think that he would go to. But he mentioned $150 billion. So maybe a little lower than I thought. But I actually think that the Democrats could move them up a little bit more than $150 billion. He also said that this is a fifth bill. We can come back in January and work on a sixth bill if needed. Let's work on the areas of the economy that need help now. And if we need to come back and do more, we would do more. If I was interviewing him, though, I would press him a little bit and I would say, listen, I understand you want to only give states the amount of money that they need for the pandemic. Clearly, right now, you're putting fiscal constraints on only pandemic related issues. But why in the world wouldn't you want to use this as an opportunity to make solvent every single state in the United States of America? Don't you think that that would strengthen the United States of America, even if you disagree with how some states have spent their money? Money. Don't you think that this is a good opportunity right now to offer the states, hey, listen, this is a crazy time. Here's some extra funding. Make yourselves solvent. And then we'll have all 50 states in a good financial situation, whether or not they were fiscally smart or not. And then moving forward, you can pressure them a little bit to try and be a little bit more fiscally responsible. Wouldn't you agree, Stephen Mnuchin, that that's a good idea rather than just pigeonholing them only to the pandemic? And then after he answers the question, I would press him a little further. And I said, you love tax cuts. Why not attach tax cuts to the money that you're willing to give out to the states? For example, raise up the amount of money you're willing to give them, maybe $500 billion dollars rather than the 150 billion you just stated but then attached to the states taking that money the stipulation that they cannot increase their state taxes for another year which you believe obviously would be a benefit to the economy and why would they need to raise state taxes if you're giving them 500 billion dollars on top of the 
$150 billion on top of the school aid and the hospital aid and all other things that you're giving them, they don't really then need to raise taxes. So it's a fair stipulation to put in. How about doing something like that? Make the state solvent, attach a tax cut to the money that they take. This is going to help make everyone more confident, businesses more confident, states more fiscally solvent. Isn't this going to be a good thing rather than just pigeonholing? money for pandemic related issues. I mean, isn't that a little too small minded right now when we need really big, nice solutions? I would have pressed him on that. You see how I'm able to press Steven Mnuchin, the Republican hand, the conservative hand of President Donald Trump in negotiations, but I'm also able to press Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer too when they want to pay for 82% of the annual budget of the entirety of the United States of America. I will give it to both sides. Uh, oh, by the way, the survey, you guys did the survey. I am going to release the results of the survey tomorrow. Very interesting results. I'm, I'm surprised at how many of you are independents. That is, by the way, leading the way on the results. More people are claiming to be independents than Republicans or Democrats who listen to this channel. And by the way, I did the survey for myself, only one survey because it's limited one per person. And I put independent as well. That is, in fact, what I am registered. So I will release the results of that survey to you tomorrow. But anyway, where do you stand? Do you basically feel like, listen, at this point, let's just get together and pass what we can? Or would you say, no, because they're not going to include more stuff, I am willing to suffer and allow other people to suffer that they should hold out and keep their negotiating power for, to get everything they can, even if they can't actually do it at all until the election, and then of course they're gonna to have to wait until after the election. Which side do you fall on? Do you agree with me about public opinion? Do you agree with me about what I'm saying on Steven Mnuchin? Do you agree with me on me not liking three out of four Trump's executive orders? The one that I do like is the student loan one. The other three I don't really like. If you wanna know my opinions, I've said them on other videos. So this is really the latest on the stimulus. There's not too much more in the, as far as updates are concerned, but I do believe they will be negotiating together right now. I think public opinion is going to say, hey, just pass something right now and work on a sixth bill later. I think that's what's gonna go on. And if Democrats don't do it, public opinion as time goes on will unfortunately shift away from the side that wants to offer everything to the side that's willing to do something. And I don't think that something is small beans. I don't think the Republicans are doing just a, a as Nancy Pelosi says, skinny bill. It's a, it's a $1 trillion bill and it's actually moved up. It's like a $1.2, $1.3 trillion bill now. So that's a lot of money. You know what I mean? In 2008, we did a bailout for $850 billion, and that was crazy. Now we're doing a $1.3 trillion bill after we just did a $2.4 trillion bill, after we just did a $500 billion bill, after we did a $250. I mean, we're spending a lot of money, so it's not small beans either. Perhaps it's time to just pass what we can and work on a sixth bill after the election's over and the American people decide who needs to be in power after November 3rd. Maybe that's the way to go. What do you guys think? I, I know there's going to be a lot of different opinions. Put them in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. If you haven't subscribed at this point or if you haven't pushed the like button, push the like button. It helps out a lot. As always, I will catch you guys next time.